Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, 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 what you doing with the mileage in the back? Uh, 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 cut the music, cut the music, cut the music. What's up? What are you doing? Brooklyn Biles is back. That is Skewered on the Barbie by Outkast featuring Raekwon. If you don't know about that song, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to do for you. But we're back, and this is part two of our whirlwind tour of the skeletal system. We're going to pick up where we left off, and that is with the thoracic cage. we got the technology going. Good. Thoracic cage. This should be a fairly quick video. Let's see if I can keep to that promise. Boom. Here we go. All right. Some thinking time. Some thinking time. So get ready to pause the video and put some thought into the following questions. What does the thoracic cage consist of posteriorly, hmm. anteriorly, huh. and laterally? Huh? All right, so what are the components of the thoracic cage? Look at the picture right here, pause the video, answer those three questions, and I'll be right back. And we're back. All right, let's get rid of that stopwatch. Boom, there you go. I hope you answered the questions. Remember, pause the videos. Treat this like it's an actual lecture. Jot notes down. If you're my students, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not one of my students and you're just enjoying the video, all right, do your thing. All right, posteriorly, before we get to that, posteriorly, it consists of your vertebral column. Ooh, anteriorly, it's the sternum and its three components, which we will go over in a little bit. And laterally, it's the ribs and the costal cartilages. I hope you answered that. Let's keep going. The role of the thoracic cage, protect the vital organs. Which ones? Pause the video and answer it. But I'm going to move on. You can answer that. Support the shoulder girdles and upper limbs. Oh, all right. So we'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at that. I'm thinking later on there's going to be some clavicle action and some scapula behind it. Okay, that's probably going to be part three of this video series, the, the whirlwind tour. And the thoracic cage supplies attachment sites for muscles. Right. This is a great overview of the whole thing. So you might want to pause this video and study it. We will break it down piece by piece in just a moment. Oh, wow, a homeostasis moment right away. Oh, whoa, I wonder what that homeostasis moment could be. Hmm, homeostasis starring Homie the Clown. All right, we're gonna focus our homeostasis moment or our clinical application moment uh, in this anatomy class on the sternum. Sternum consists of three parts. Superiorly, the manubrium, check. Inferior to that, the body of the sternum, check to that. And finally, posterior, excuse me, most inferior is this chunk of cartilage that later ossifies or hardens later in life called the xiphoid process. That's how you say that word, xiphoid. All right, so what's the homeostatic moment here? Well, the homeostasis moment is that the xiphoid process projects posteriorly in some people this chunk right here. So there's a procedure that's done sometimes in life-saving situations where you have to be careful where you place your hands. So let's you know forget the hints, hints, hints here and keep going. Chest trauma can push the xiphoid process into the diaphragm, or as we like to joke around and call it the diaphragm, right? Helped me spell it when I was a little kid. Diaphragm, all right? Or it could puncture some of those other vital organs in the same region, the liver, the heart. Wow, imagine this small little spade-shaped piece of well, hardened cartilage being pushed deep into your chest and causing hemorrhaging of some organs. Yikes, right? So massive hemorrhaging can result if you were to pierce any vitals by causing trauma to this chest. So that is why, my friends, homeostasis moment, clinical application, lesson to be learned. When conducting CPR, as it says right here, you have to make sure that the, the palms of your hand, where you're thrusting downwards, if you will, or deep into the chest of a person, you gotta make sure you're applying chest to the body of the sternum and not to inferiorly and hitting the xiphoid process because you can actually break it off, all right? So don't do that. Let's keep going. All right, thoracic cage. The, obviously, the main component of the thoracic cage are the ribs. Oh, look at this stupid cartoon image I used. Remember, Brooklyn biologist, vegetarian, and I can never understand why so many chicken restaurants and uh, rib joints, they use the animal that is the victim of the diet as like a happy mascot. This is really confusing to me, right? What's he so happy about? 
Being a cannibal? All right, I'll save my soapbox for later. You know how I feel about this shit. We're moving on. Ribs, overview time. You have 12 pairs or 24 total. Okay, feel free to count them if you want. Go ahead, pause the video. All right, I'm back. Let's keep going. All of them attach posteriorly. I like how we're getting used to our directional terminology, right? It's good practice. All attach posteriorly to bodies and to the bodies and transverse processes of the thoracic vertebrae. Quick question, how many thoracic vertebrae do you have? Yeah, 12, just like the number of pairs of ribs you have. All right, so T1 through T12. So they're all kind of more or less equal. We will get into that in, in lab, but they all attach posteriorly to the bodies and the transverse processes of vertebrae in the back or dorsally. Okay, but let's break them down into categories. The true ribs, pairs one through seven. Here they are, the first seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Man, I can run fast. We can also refer to them as vertebrosternal. Again, we're not gonna let these big words scare us, meaning that they have a posterior attachment to vertebrae and an anterior attachment to the sternum. They are vertebral sternal or true ribs. Well, shoot, if they're the true ribs, what does that make the rest of the ribs, right? Ribs eight through 10 are referred to as, here we go, right? Uh, blah, 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 eight, nine, 10, right? Oops, I think I mislabeled that, whatever. You get the idea. And I'm not gonna edit that out, so fuck it, right? Eight through 10, eight, nine, 10. There we go, with 11 and 12 down here. Boom, all right, I am capable. They're considered false ribs, eight, one, eight through 10. Vertebrochondral, all right? Posterior attachment to the vertebrae, that's still true. Anterior attachment, what does this word kind of hint at? Conjure, I'm pausing the video, you're pausing the video. So ver vertebrae and yeah, we're back, it's cartilage. So their attachment is not straight away to a costal cartilage onto the sternum like the true ribs. I, it's what I call, they piggyback, right? They piggyback on the costal cartilage of the rib superior to it. Do you see that? Eight, nine, 10, you see how their costal cartilage has to like hitch a ride onto the costal cartilage of rib seven? Do you see that? I hope you do. And finally, one of my most fascinating bits of anatomy knowledge, I love this for some reason, you have a pair of what are called floating ribs, 11 and 12 down here. I draw your attention down here, pun intended. Floating ribs, pairs 11 and 12. No sternal attachment. Isn't that fascinating? Isn't that fascinating that these guys are attached to the bodies of the thoracic vertebrae, T11 and T12, and they come around and curve to the anterior aspect of our bodies and then attach to nothing. And perhaps you've heard the rumors, we've had a lot of fun with this in our classes over the years, but there are rumors of pop culture celebrities and icons and whatnot having surgery to remove these ribs for various reasons. Oh man, I'm not gonna get into it. Some of them are kind of dirty. Get your minds out of the gutter, would you? Let's keep going. All right, this is a very challenging aspect topic for my students. So let's, let's really pay attention here. How do the ribs attach to the vertebrae? Okay, so we have a right lateral aspect of a thoracic vertebrae here, okay? We're on the right side of it. We're looking at a lateral aspect. Notice the body, check, all right? There would be another body up here, another body down here. You get the idea. Let me erase that ink real quick. Boom. Now, check this out. Superior costal facet receives the head of a rib. So this is a facet, and it's going to receive the, the articulating facet of the head of a rib. It's not pictured yet. We're going to draw it in here, okay? And when we do draw it in, just to be sure, the rib will first come out of the screen towards us and then curve anteriorly this way, as if we were standing to the right-hand side of this person. This is a right lateral aspect. We also have a transverse costal facet, all right? So two articulating surfaces here and here. So let's populate the rest of this image so you can see how the head of the rib attaches here, right? And then the tubercle or a little stumpy projection will attach here, and then the angle of the rib and the rest of it, the body, will curl around to the front. Poor drawing right there. 
but I think you can picture it. So let's see if that comes true. Boom, all right? We actually use the next vertebrae inferior to it to accomplish that. So check it out. As we discussed, as you imagined, here is the head of the rib attached to that superior costal facet. Check. Here comes the neck of the rib. And then you have an articulation. You can't see it, but there is another transverse process underneath here. And it's hooking up with this rib on the tubercle. And then we see the rib, there's the angle, and here comes the body of the rib curling anteriorly, okay? By the way, we will play with rib models in lab and you will see this all work out. So there's the body of the shaft of the rib, boom, going that way and hooking up anteriorly to the costal cartilage, check, and the sternum, check. Okay, a little something I'm gonna pepper into this for uh, your consideration as well is, believe it or not, Let's just consider this, I don't know, whatever, T4, right? And this is T5, all right? The head of this rib actually articulates with a facet on T5 and a little nub of a facet right there, all right? So it's like two facets kind of join up to articulate with the head of the rib. Wow, I'm gonna leave this up for a second. I'll pause it, study it, all right? And Imagine it, so you know, maybe even make a doodle with your finger about the, the rib above it doing the same action. You see that? Being placed in the same plane, okay? All right, so study that, we're moving on to keep this video a little bit shorter. Let's take a look at it from a superior aspect, same arrangement, the same thing is what we're looking at right now, the attachment of a rib posteriorly to a thoracic vertebrae. All right, notice a couple of things, spinous process, check. Transverse, uh, transverse process, check. With its costal facet, check. It's gonna be receiving that rib tubercle. The heart-shaped body of the thoracic vertebrae. Check, 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 check. Uh, what do you notice about the hole? What do you notice about the uh, vertebral foramen, huh? Oh yeah, it's round-shaped because we're in the thoracic region. All right, so you should be able to imagine what the rib is gonna look like Imagine what the other transverse process will look like with its facet, okay? And how the rib might be head here, tubercle here, curling anteriorly. All right, do you have a, an image in your head? I helped you out a little bit, here we go. Boom, okay, see that? We have the head of the rib hugging onto that superior costal facet. Remember, this is a superior aspect. We're looking top, down onto this vertebrae, right? And then it curls around and you get the, tuber the tubercle, that word always gives me trouble, Jesus. Tubercle, all right, getting it down. So attaching ligaments. All right, look at it hooking on to that uh, transverse process facet. Excellent, here comes the shaft, there's the angle of the rib. Here comes the shaft and it would obviously continue, 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 much wider angle and curl around to the front. Let me clean up the slide so you can study it. Pause the video right here, absorb it all, take it all in. We will play with models in the lab. And we'll keep going. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this lecture on the thoracic cage. Can you believe that? Oh, whew. well, I sort of sped through the sternum a little bit there. You do have to know the manubrium, body, and the xiphoid process of the sternum, you have to know the sternal angle, and we're gonna sign off, we're gonna stop this video with a little joke from, uh, from coming to America, remember this guy? Remember this guy? There's a fly in my soup, or whatever he said, all right? Is it velvet? That's beautiful, what? I can't believe I'm messing up one of my favorite movies quoting it right now, but we're gonna pick up this lecture with the appendicular skeleton, I'm pretty sure after this funny slide. This is just meant to give us a break in the action, break in the action, and we come back to talk about the rest of the skeletal system, part three of our tour. Let me just click the slide over and make sure that this is where we should be stopping. Yeah, that's where we're gonna pick up next time. So, there you have it, my friends. If you're in my class, stay tuned. Part three is coming up real soon. If you're not, the most important thing is you watched the video, you enjoyed yourself, and maybe you learned a little something, right? So I'll play a little bit of outro music. Brooklyn Biologist coming back with another video real soon. Let's listen to this music. The common denominator, the nigga numerator. Never know who to hate, that niggas cater to your ego. I'm sorry, like Atari, who's the cousin to Coleco. Fish in Puerto Rico, back on the street like Chico. The boy 
hard, she large and got a lack in the garage. Few parts here and there, I declare hard. My lord, one at. Ah, oh, I gotta cut the music. There's some explicit lyrics in there. I'm sorry. You're done.